In this video, we'll look at various techniques for slit lamp examination of the anterior segment. The key to successful examination of the anterior segment is knowledge of the various methods of lighting which can be achieved by the slit lamp. The first of the methods that can be used on the slit lamp is diffuse illumination. Not all slit lamps have this option automatically enabled. In order to effect diffuse illumination, there must be a ground glass. This is normally swung out of the way so that the slit lamp can be used for slit and focal illumination. In order to have diffuse illumination, this ground glass lens must be swung into position in front of the slit lamp beam so as to diffuse it. Diffuse illumination is used whenever the emphasis is on surface details. In this case of a total corneal opacity, the surface details are of paramount importance and diffuse illumination is adequate. Here also, though the emphasis is on the lens, diffuse illumination gives you enough information. In this case, of course, focal illumination would give you still more detail of the sunken nucleus of the Mogagnian cataract. Here again, there's a corneal transplant, which is a surface uh, condition, a surface uh, surgical procedure, and the sutures and the corneal transplant itself can be adequately seen in diffuse illumination, as can the irident lysis, iris enclavation on the top. Pterygia and other conjunctival lesions are also best seen with diffuse illumination. The next type of illumination on the slit lamp is focal broad beam illumination. This is the illumination most commonly used to see an overview of the eye. Since it's a focal illumination, the focus can be shifted progressively more posterior into the eye up to the anterior vitreous of course and details of the area where the broad beam is focused can be visualized. Now here you see a Morgagnian cataract with the nucleus sunken in the liquefied cortex and details of the nucleus which is within the lens can be better seen because of the fo focality of the broad beam. Here we can see the mirror through which the light of the slit lamp is reflected onto the eye. You will notice that whether the beam be broad or narrow, the majority of the light falls on the upper narrow tongue of the mirror. This is important because whenever posterior segment examination is done, the short reflex mirror is used. And whenever the short reflex mirror is used, the beam must be tilted so that it falls on the lower broad part of the lens. For anterior segment examination of course this is not of much concern because the regular mirror is going to be used. Here we see that with a focal broad beam details of structures deeper into the eye like the iris can be seen without the overlying corneal reflexes coming much in the way. Here we see Busaka's nodules on the iris. The beam can be broadened or narrowed using this knob at the side of the illumination column. By narrowing the beam, we can get focal slit illumination. And this, this is the type of illumination that gives the slit lamp its name. Using a narrow slit allows us to see the anterior structures of the eye in an optical section. That is to say, when we look at the view before, for us with a narrow slit it appears as though you're cutting the eye open with an optical knife and seeing it in a longitudinal section and here we can see the center of the lens showing a nuclear sclerosis and this is very clearly uh, noticeable with a narrow focal slit the next type of illumination is what is called retro illumination in retroillumination, the object of interest, in this case the intraocular lens, 
is seen in shadow against a background illumination. In this case, the background illumination is of the choroid and this is called retroillumination against the red reflex. But retroillumination need not always be against the red reflex. You could also have retroillumination in this case from the iris. The iris is lit up and the pits in the lens can be seen as shadows in retroillumination. Another type of illumination is what is called indirect illumination. In indirect illumination, the object of interest is not directly illuminated, but an opacity next to it is illuminated and this opacity transfers or transmits some of the light into the transparent cornea to allow us to see the object of interest, which otherwise might be very faint and be blanked out with the bright light of direct illumination. Here we see vessels in the cornea with indirect illumination. The partially opaque cornea next to these vessels is illuminated and the vessels next to the opaque cornea are highlighted with indirect illumination. This method of illumination is very similar to another method called sclerotic scatter where the sclera is illuminated. In this case, the sclera would be the opacity that's illuminated and structures in the cornea would light up. Another way of looking at this phenomenon of sclerotic scatter is that the illuminated sclera acts like a light source. The cornea acts like a fiber optic light guide and transmits light to the sclera on the other side. The cornea itself will not be illuminated unless there is an opacity within the cornea which redirects light towards the observer. One of the features of the slit lamp beam and observation system in its normal usage is that both of these are power focal. That is to say that the focus of the illumination beam and the focus of the observation system is at the same point. Even if the observation tube or the illumination system is rotated, the focus of both remains the same. In order to do sclerotic scatter, this power focality must be broken. And to break this power focality, it is necessary to use this knob at the back of the illumination system. Loosening the knob allows the illumination system to be lo loosened and rocked from side to side allowing the illumination beam to be moved from side to side. In other words, by loosening this knob, you can have the illumination on the sclera while the observation is centered in the middle of the cornea. A look at this picture or these two pictures will show you that for getting an optical cross-section of the eye, you need power focality. The slit and the observation must be focused at the same point. But for sclerotic scatter, the slit is on the left side of the picture and the focus of the examination system, the observation system, is in the middle of the cornea. And here are some pictures. Here are superficial punctate keratitic patches seen in sclerotic scatter. The next type of illumination is called specular illumination. The word speculum in Latin means a mirror. And in order to implement specular illumination, the conditions that must be met are the same as those for reflection from a plane mirror. This means that the, the, the illumination slit beam comes in at a certain angle and the observation eyepiece is at exactly the same angle but on the opposite side of the normal. To put it in another way, the patient looks straight ahead. The slit beam is brought in from a certain angle, let's say 30 degrees or 45 degrees, and the illumination system has one of the oculars aligned at the same angle, the same 30 degrees or 45 degrees as the incident beam. 
in such a situation the ocular of the slit lamp which is aligned with the reflected beam will pick up the specular beam from the object of interest which usually is the endothelium here we see the endothelium in specular illumination usually to get to see the endothelium in specular illumination a magnification of at least 40x is required in order to examine the anterior segment of the eye one also needs to know about the filter turret the filter turret contains various filters such as a neutral density filter a green filter and a blue filter the blue filter in particular is useful when using fluorescein dye on the eye here we see fluorescein dye being used to stain a dendritic ulcer in the upper left picture a halogen light is used to illuminate the eye and in the lower right picture the blue filter is used to accentuate the fluorescence in the bed of the ulcer and here we see with normal illumination a small dendrite stained with rose bengal dye we've gone through all the different methods of illumination one by one but it's really informative if we see the same pathology examined by the different methods of illumination and here we see a corneal opacity with pigmentation in it due to old interstitial keratitis and with ghost vessels within the cornea the upper left picture shows a broad beam and you will appreciate the opacity and the pigmentation the slit not only shows you the opacity and the pigmentation but it also highlights the fact that within the pigmented area there seems to be some breakdown of tissue and when you see the same against the red glow the opacity is not so well visible but the ghost vessels are highlighted and the pigmentation is also seen and retroillumination against the lens again doesn't highlight the opacity but highlights the pigmentation and here is another example where diffuse illumination doesn't show the lens precipitates whereas focal illumination shows them up very clearly and here we go back and see some more spk's upper left is in a broad beam broad focal illumination lower right is in sclerotic scatter and then of course you also see it in focal slit illumination and here is a krukenberg spindle with a narrow beam showing you that it is at the level of the endothelium a broad beam highlighting the extent against retroillumination and against retroillumination against the red glow and here we see a traumatic cataract in focal illumination first and against the red glow subsequently